Welcome back to Zot Play's second podcast. Today was the Queen stage of Volta Burgos, which finished on Laguna's Daniela climb, where Joel made it, came back and won somehow, setting a new record. Did you watch the stage, Nachka? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I watch every stage naturally, but. Uh, yeah, I didn't expect that from Almeida because he was already struggling like on Pico and Blanco. But then he also paced himself back there. So I don't know. Maybe just always manages to just get back at the top, just like he did today. I think he got back with like, what, 400 meters maybe yeah. to go to the, to the group, which was he paced dropped, by Carlos Rodriguez. Yeah. He dropped, he fucking dropped early. like out of it. He dropped like out of a 25 man group right at the start of the steep section, the yeah. 3.2 kilometers at 9.7% that we have at the end. Why the fuck he drops so early? He maybe knows he can do this watts per kilo for 10 minutes and he just spaces himself, but it's still weird because he loses like drafting effect, which still is, yeah. is something at even 10%. Yeah, so basically he was like, yeah, dropped right out of the back and then. And there was like a six man group. I suddenly see him right behind. I was like, what the fuck has happened again here? When he was like, yeah, I think he was like, when Hindley was dropping, I think there I saw him right behind the group again. He rejoined the Ineos pace group. They paced the entire climb with, or the entire last 3.2 kilometers with Carlos Rodriguez, the young Spanish rider for Sivakov, who was leader in GC before the stage. And eventually won the C- GC as well. Lopez attacked once before, but got caught by Ineos. And then... Yeah, he attacked really early, Lopez. But uh, yeah, with two point five kilometers to go. He usually attacks early when he has like good likes, and yeah, but they... he wasn't shit. And he's back after his incident in airport where he, I think it was fake news. Yeah, he, he didn't yeah, he have was... any drugs with him, so yeah. Yeah, he was just heard as a witness, I think, in some appeal. I don't know exactly. It was blown up by the media pretty much. Yeah, he, he's also in good shape and finished uh, uh, with Almeida, who won or beat, beat Lopez in the sprint at the end, uh, seven seconds ahead of Sivakov, who uh, retained his GCD that he gained on the Pico Blanco stage. Uh, Almeida and Lopez, 6.75 watts per kilogram, a new climbing record for the last three two, 3.2 kilometers. So... Pretty good performance. The watts per kilogram themselves are not really that impressive, but you have to consider that they're like, like what, eight kilometers at six percent or five percent before. So you already have some fatigue from that. The stage itself wasn't that hard. Eleven point eight five kilojoule per kilogram per hour. So yeah, pretty easy stage. But yeah, decent time from them. Also, I think maybe the surprise of the day, uh, Ilan van Wilde finished fifth. Uh, will be. Remco Evenepoel's primary mountain domestic in the Vuelta. Yeah, his best climbing performance by far, but I don't know how con- consistent he is. Yeah, yeah he looked he really can... good on Picon Blanco, and today he proved himself with yeah 6.46 in the last 3.2 kilometers for 10 minutes, so decent performance, I yeah, guess. Yeah, he beat the Giro winner, Jai Hindley, also another Giro winner. Tayo Gegenhardt. So, yeah, he beat two Giro winners. Or also Vincenzo Nibali lost to him. So, another Giro winner who lost one Wilder. I think he could be really important to set up some of Remco's attacks. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure he will be top domestique, top mountain domestique on every stage, but just having him maybe set up one or two attacks throughout the race yeah. could, could be quite helpful because, like in San Sebastian, yeah, Remco had pretty much. I had to rely on EF to blow it up because yeah, James Knox wasn't going to do it. Let's be honest. Yeah, well, Von Milder is 22, so he might progress. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I think he's climbing already way better than last year on DSM, where he was climbing pretty, pretty shit and was only like good in TTs. I think like in Romandy, he was like third in the TT and then lost five minutes on on the mountain stage. I can't remember the climb where Woods won and Thomas uh, crashed. Dion 2000. Dion 2000. Like Dion yeah. 2000. Yeah, that climb. Yeah, but the biggest disappointment today was Moistar. <laughs> Calahandro Ballard finished six, 16th, last one minute. <laughs> Sauce finished 20th, <laughs> last one minute 15. Like, uh, what the fuck happened to Sosa? They can't even perform in this race anymore. Like, that was his only, only like, claim to fame to perform. 
give you good in burgers, but seems like yeah. that's not possible on, on Movistar either. So it's also won like two times in Burgos in 2018, 2019. Fuck. Oh my god, he won at age 20, so it means that yeah, and in 2020 he won. In 2020, he was like he lost time in Crossbands and then won the Laguna Stanaya stage yeah. as well ahead of Landa and Remco. Almeida so, yeah. finished 38 seconds uh, behind Sosa in 2020. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, some question that. mark, but it's also not like we have seen a lot throughout the last few years that in these like preparation races, Burgos, and what was the other one, T- Tour of the Alps, that uh, contenders aren't really in top shape. So. I'm not sure we can take too much from from these performances here. Yeah, we'll have to yeah. wait for the. It's here because like Sosa won in uh, Volta Asturias, yeah, GC. So it was a preparation yeah, race for Giro, but he sucked in Giro. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Movistar also really gonna struggle with the relegation now, probably because they are absolutely not fucking scoring any points. Yeah, because in... like EF, DSM, and the Bike Exchange scored a lot of points in last month since tour. Yeah, DSM like gained three hundred twenty points with our Arons month uh, second place in Pologne. Yeah, I think DSM are out of the battle probably. Yeah, they have like two two thousand points advantage over Lotto Sudal. So yeah, it's, they're, yeah, they're it's more safe. like Lotto, Lotto Bike Exchange, Israel, Movistar, I guess now. Yeah, like I, I like I think Bike Exchange also will be safe because Michael Matthews will score like so many points in Canadian classics and in other. So and it's... Simon Yates will probably also be good in like Italian classics here and there. Uh, maybe for Volta if he's starting. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. starting the Volta as well. Okay. But nah, I don't know if he can get the cheesy. Who knows? Yeah. But Morris really needs uh, the big to Volta. Perform. Yeah, Henrik Moss again, second in GC, maybe. <laughs> yeah, and then I think I think Valverde really needs to carry them now because like he can score big points still in the Italian classics probably yeah, if he's big... in good shape. He he should like skip world. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't send all yeah. that world. I yeah, I don't that's... care if he's retiring, but I need you see points in yeah one one day races. I don't know. I don't know if he can do that against Valverde. Is it like he's pretty much a boss of movie star after feeling? Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Movie star definitely in big trouble. 